Yeah. All right. You can start now. All right, this is what we're looking at. Uh, electromagnetic induction is our, uh, it's gonna be our discussion for the day. We have 20 minutes to really get many things done. So I'm gonna try to be quick and uh, squeeze a lot of information in a very short time. So um, electromagnetic induction. Earlier on we talked about electromagnetism. Now it's electromagnetism, electromagnetic induction, two different uh, things altogether. And uh, uh, I got this objective here for us today. We're going to define what electromagnetic uh, induction is and we will also define relative motion. And we'll, uh, the third outcome or the objective for the day is we will differentiate between electromagnetism and electromagnetic induction. So we got three objectives. That is our aim for the day, uh, for this presentation. Uh, but before we actually move on, I got this discussion question here. If you replace, uh, we got a setting here. As you can see, we have a, a setting we got uh, a um, all right I have a conductor here placed within this magnetic field we got a north pole here south pole down here just a conductor connected to uh, not some source but it's a galvanometer it's connected to this galvanometer if you ask this question, okay, if you ask this question, instead of this galvanometer, if we replace this with a, a light bulb here, you actually try this out, ask someone on the street, just some ordinary person, will the light glow? And they will tell you it's not going to work. The light will not come on. Why? Because it is not connected to some source. We are aware that once when this uh, two connecting wires are connected to some uh, let's say dry cell or to some electricity source, then we, we know that light will come on. But in this setting, we do not have any uh, electricity source, power source. And therefore, if you ask this question, if you replace the galvanometer with a bulb, will it glow? Ordinary person will say no, but for us as physics people, we need to uh, dig much more deeper and try to answer this question. Now. To answer this question, this question, we're going to use the concept of um, electromagnetic induction to answer this question. And here, uh, this is what I have. What is electromagnetic induction? So to answer our previous question, this is the setting that gives us the lead into answering our question, if the light is going to come on or not. So what is electromagnetic induction? It's basically the production of an electric current uh, by a changing magnetic field. So while magnetic field, in a magnetic field like uh, the one that we have down here, this simple setting, we have a uh, south pole down here, a north pole on that side, a current carrying conductor is passed through uh, the magnet but it is not connected to any source. This is uh, just, let's say it's a lamp. What happens is that simply changing the, uh, just simply moving the current carrying conductor in the magnetic field, it's, it, it, it affects the particle arrangement in the current carrying conductor. And so what happens is that, remember, uh, you know, when you're talking about the minute part of an atom, atom, just an atom is made up of proton, neutron, and electron. Electron is the tiniest and the lightest uh, particle that floats around. And so what happens is that with this magnetic force, it, it disturbs the particle arrangement. And so what happens is that it uh, simply uh, causes those electrons to move when electrons actually begin to move, uh, when they begin to receive this energy from the magnetic field, uh, they get energized, they get magnetized, and they begin to move. So when they move, that's basically the fundamental of current. The, the idea of current, we defined last year, we defined current as the flow of electrons. So when electrons around here, when they're disturbed, they begin to flow. 
they begin to flow. When they flow around, it is called current. So flow of electrons is current. So the definition of uh, the electromagnetic induction here, it's basically production of electric current by changing magnetic field. So changing magnetic field, when magnetic field is changing, how do we change them? Either by increasing or decreasing. That's one way to do that. Two, uh, when the magnetic field remains the same, there must be some kind of movement taking place with the conductor to produce that effect. So that's that. Second point here, the current produced in this set, if current is produced, going back to our first question, if current is produced, obviously the light will glow. So yes, the answer to our first question, the initial question is, it's yes. So the current that is produced is called induced current. It's called induced current. Now in uh, moving on to the third point here, induced current is only produced when there is a relative motion. Relative motion is uh, an important uh, part of the whole process of electromagnetic induction. So relative motion is very, very important. Uh, and uh, the relative motion is then moving either the magnet while keeping the conductor in a fixed position or moving the conductor while having the magnet in the fixed position or moving both of them, the conductor and the magnet, uh, in opposite direction where the conductor can be able to cut the magnetic field lines. Uh, and so that's it. Uh, then we say that this is uh, a relative motion. But there is no relative motion if, let's say, the current carrying conductor is not in any motion, the magnetic field lines, they are not in motion, they are just at rest, then there isn't any, uh, there isn't any um, induced current or there isn't any, then we say no relative motion, no induced current. So class, listen up. If there's going to be an induced current, then there must be a relative motion. If there is no relative motion, no induced current. Uh, let's move a little bit further down and um, I got something else for you. <clears throat> now check this out. Here, I have a straight wire. This is a straight wire. This is a straight wire placed within this magnetic field. A straight wire in a magnetic field. What happens? When the wire is moved down this way, then the needle on the galvanometer it deflects. Uh, why it deflects? It actually tells the, that there is a presence of uh, current. Uh, it detects the flow of electrons. And so uh, it tells uh, the reader that there is a current. Now action, here take a look at those actions, observation, and uh, here are some possible conclusions that uh, could be seen. Now, action, let's say the Y is moved downwards. What happens to the, uh, the observation here? The needle on the galvanometer, it uh, deflects to the right. What does that mean? When the needle deflects, it simply means that current is flowing. Current is flowing. The Y is moved upward then needle is moving to the left. What does that mean? Current flows in the reverse direction. So when the movement of the conductor, when it is moved in one direction, current flows in one direction. When it moves in the reverse direction, current also changes its direction as well. So that is, uh, that's basically that. Now, the, the other thing is like, take a look at the next one, no deflection. No deflection meaning no current. What is that? Oh, how can this happen? The action is that the wire is moved horizontally sideways. What does that mean? Movement is taking place, but this time it is moving in line with the field lines. So 
when the conductor is moving in line with the field lines, then it is not cutting any field lines, but it is moving with the field lines. So there is uh, no there is no uh, deflection. Particles are not being disturbed, and therefore electrons cannot flow. If electrons cannot flow, no current is produced. Uh, down here, we get no deflection, no deflection, uh, which means that no current is generated for both cases. Uh, how and when? Okay, here, magnet and wire are moved at the same speed in the same direction. Please make note of that. When both of them are moving in the same speed, in the same direction, then this movement, both of them are moving, but that movement is not called relative motion. This is not relative motion. Uh, F down here, the wire is L stationary between the magnet. Once when it's L uh, stationary, motionless, in the magnetic field, uh, it means that no current is produced as well, no deflection. So from this, uh, in a straight <clears throat> wire in the magnetic field, uh, current will only be produced when it is moved, when, when a relative uh, motion is taking place. No relative motion, no current is produced. Now let's move on to the next uh, page. And here, this is the possible conclusion that could be drawn from that table. Conclusion, current is induced when a conductor is uh, conductor cuts the magnetic field line. The second point here, the direction of the current induced depends on the direction of the movement, uh, either the movement of the conductor or the uh, magnetic field lines. When uh, the magnetic field line direction is reversed or when the conductor is moved in a reverse direction, then current also flows in the reverse direction. So please make note of this. Uh, that's basically that. The second thing, that's the first setting. Here I get the second setting down here, magnet in a solenoid. A solenoid, this time uh, a coil, a uh, conductor is turned into a solenoid and uh, it's a coil. It's held at as uh, in a fixed position, this time magnet down here. This magnet is moved in and out of the solenoid. What happens? These are the observations. Let's say north pole of the magnet is moved into the solenoid. Once when the north pole is moved into the solenoid, uh, let's say for example, observation is that the needle moves to the right. It also tells us that current is flowing. Uh, the second case here, the bar magnet is uh, moved out is moved out of the solenoid once when it's moved in to the right current flows when it's moved out to the left so moving this the permanent magnet in the solenoid uh, in the right direction current flows in one direction pulling it out current flows in the reverse direction and so uh, that's that's one thing down here that's not all when the south pole of the magnet is moved into the solenoid, then a needle is deflected to the left. Current is flowing. This one seems like the, the one up here. It seems like the bar magnet is moved out of that. So uh, the south pole moving into the solenoid is just the same as the north pole moving out of the solenoid because needle is uh, deflected to the left and current, that means that current is flowing in the same direction for both cases. The solenoid is moved towards the, the bar magnet with, uh, which is L stationary. Then it is, uh, the needle deflects to the right so the point in here is that when the needle deflects either to the left or to the right for all of those uh, cases up here, what it means is that current is flowing. Current is flowing for all of this. 
Now, the direction to which current is flowing, it depends on either the North Pole or the South Pole is placed either in or out. Those are some of the factors that they contribute towards the direction of the induced current. And uh, take a look at E and F. E, the magnet is L stationary in a solenoid. When magnet is uh, not moved, or even the solenoid is also, both of them are at rest, then no deflection, no current. Uh, F, bar magnet and solenoid are moved at the same speed in the same direction, then this motion is not relative motion. So we say that no current is produced. All right, uh, that's basically that. I think um, I'm going to stop very soon in the next meet. Um, Conclusion here, yeah, induced current is produced when there is a relative motion between a solenoid and a magnet. And the second one is the direction of the induced current depends on the poles of the magnet used and the direction of the uh, motion of either the magnet or the coil. So that's basically the conclusion of the solenoid. Now, induced current and um, induced electromotive force, that's uh, something that uh, when current is produced, the current produced is called induced current, and uh, the electromotive force is basically the voltage it is talking about, and it is responsible for driving the current around a circuit. And that is uh, basically uh, the outcome of the electromagnetic induction. The magnitude of the induced, car induced uh, electromotive force, uh, which is called EMF, and the uh, direction of induced current can be determined by application of, there are two laws, Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Those are the two laws that I'm going to talk about in the next uh, session. Uh, so that's basically that. And finally, finally, uh, okay, difference between electromagnetic induction and electromagnetism is that uh, the difference is uh, uh, in simple terms, you can simply say that electromagnetism is uh, using electricity to produce a magnet, whereas uh, electromagnetic uh, induction is simply using a magnet to produce electricity. So that's basically that.